Welcome everyone to another episode of the Biohackers Water Cooler. I'm your co-host Fernando from Orlando, joined with co-host Stephen Klein, the Super Connector. I'm so excited that today we get to chat with Victor Sakalov Sagalovsky. He's a polymath, a modern day, modern day alchemist, a health guru, and we're going to be chatting about how to live longer, slow down aging, and optimize your cellular energy through water, more specifically, light water. Stephen, please continue this introduction because you know Victor for longer. Um, and why did you invite him to share the good news today? Well, I invited him because we're, we have a podcast on biohacking and what Victor is doing is something some of our audience may, the first time they hear about it, if they are watching this podcast or listening, this will be the first time they've heard of light water in the definition of it, I'm sure. But Victor is a genius. He had teamed up with Robert Slovak, who is another genius who brought several great things to us, including Quinton water, which is a whole other rabbit hole, reverse osmosis water, and a couple other things. But deuterium depleted water is definitely on the bleeding edge of biohacking. So Victor is a, is a really, really interesting guy. Uh, I see him at a lot of conferences and after parties or whatever, and he, it's always a huge pleasure to have conversations with him because not only do I learn cool stuff, but I usually laugh like crazy at the same time. He's a great person, loves to have fun, travel. Again, he's a genius and he's got a great company. He's got a great mission. So with that, Victor, welcome to the Biohackers Water Cooler. Pleasure to have you here and can't wait for you to introduce our audience to light water. Thank you, Stephen, for that wonderful introduction. <laughs> so, Victor, tell us why. Like, why do you do what you do? Why light, light water? How did you get into this amazing mission that you're on? It started really early in life, you know, when I realized you are what you eat. <laughs> Eventually, you get to the conclusion that if you are what you eat and you're mostly water, you are what you drink, too. So I've been uh, always been interested in this ever since I took my first yoga class and started studying that. And I just was really keen on understanding how the body works. You know, I, I, I recognize that we come here with all the tools that we need, but we don't have the manual. So while we're here, we have to do what we can to help us help others and try to move the needle a little bit forward in our knowledge of, of how to uh, return, I believe, return to those, to those glory days when we used to live a lot longer. And uh, I think it's possible. I think it's possible to extend our health span, our lifespan. And uh, I like to look for things that are foundational. You know, I like to hike all the way to the, to the source of the spring, the, the source of the knowledge. So it's always been an interest of mine, a passion of mine to, to understand things. You know, I'm like somebody that questions everything. You know, I question why we have seven days in a week. Why not 10? So I'm just very, <laughs> I'm very curious. So, um, and certainly the thing I'm most curious about is that which can help humanity. And well, starting with myself, and if it, if it works for me, then I'd like to share whatever I learned. And so uh, in 2004, I read an article called In Search of the Fountain of Youth that was talking about this great discovery for longevity, which had occurred 60 plus years before. And uh, it just grabbed me. I really recognized it as something that is quite pivotal and quite important because uh, I, I, I want I, I don't want anything superficial. Uh, superficial is like a band-aid. It never it just covers up things. So water being like we're 98.9 .9 percent water by molecular weight. So and then you start looking at the water that we're made up of and you, you get to certain conclusions and you start making realizations. And uh, so my I started out in uh, my early 20s in plant-based culinary arts and uh, then I got into, permaculture, then I got into understanding biochemistry and alchemy and all, all, all these things, all these esoteric subjects, they just, it just uh, fascinated me. And uh, the, if you devote time to it, which now I have uh, probably the last 30 years devoted to this, uh, you, you get it, you get somewhere, you know, eventually you start making connections and understandings and it helps to, helps to, uh, be a good critical thinker. And um, yeah, so that's a little bit about me. This is amazing. Uh, I'm taking some notes here. You're the first person that I've been, heard, I've heard talk aloud about the why not, you know, why seven days and not 10? And some, I've, <laughs> and I question I've, everything. 
I've I've had that thought so many times, and but I never voiced it. This is the first time, and this is great. <laughs> and and why is a minute sixty seconds not a hundred? Well, a lot when you start asking the right, it's all everything starts with asking the right question. So there is a reason the minute is sixty seconds. Um, we can get into this separately. It's very very yeah. esoteric, but that does align uh, with with the universe. That does that does have sacred alignment. But seven day week, I don't know where that came from because the in the, some cultures practice ten days, you know, and they, everything was and they had multiple calendars: a moon calendar, a Venus calendar, solar calendar. Everything we're we're stuck into this system now, and we don't question it. And I think that's that's not a good idea. I think we 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 must we absolutely must question everything if we're going to evolve. And we have to look to our past too and see that anybody get it right at any point. And if they did, why don't we? Focus in on that and try to repeat it. So, because every every mistake has been made and every triumph has already occurred, it's just we're redo, we're redoing it. So why not why not make life easier for us? You know, when we come here, we know it's already going to be hard. So <laughs> why make it harder? Absolutely. So, Before we go into the water, real quick, Stephen, uh, just to the the moon calendar. Um, I was talking to someone about this, and she said, "Hey, um, there's." in the moon calendar it's usually you know 28 days and that's the month that's so right. i was i started testing you know like having i download a couple of apps you know instead of having the, the months be the months what they are but you know using the months as the moon calendar months uh and it's been very interesting reading if you follow what, the moon you get 13 months you get a 13 month calendar and there's exactly. a hidden and there's a and there's a hidden zodiac in there Ophiuchus. i haven't talked about this in a decade or more but there's there's actually 13 so 13 constellations not 12 so yeah there's a 13 moon calendar the mayans followed that along that was one of their calendars the calendar is specific to what you're to what you're trying to measure right with lunar it's for planting and 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 fertility cycles long-term cycles you would you would measure you would use venus um solstices and equinoxes solar so there's different calendars that you can use and uh yeah the lunar count i had i had uh i wrote an app that was on the app store a long time ago i took it off because there's this research that shows that there's this thing called lunation do you know what that is lunation no. lunation is the is the phase of the moon when you were born so uh that's when you have the most energy that's so i was born on a waning gibbous so on a waning gibbous is where i would be have the most vitality and the interesting thing is the app I wrote, it was called Septual. It's not on there anymore because they kept updating the OS and I didn't want to do it. But uh, but turns out that if you if if you, a female, she can spontaneously ovulate on her lunation. And this creates a lot of unwanted pregnancies because they think that they're on their cycle. But because your lunation is such a such a time of vitality, you can have a spontaneous ovulation. And this is research that was done, I think. Bulgaria like 40 years ago so I'm like I'm really keen on finding like finding these these uh, 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 obscure studies but then I but then I put them through my system of of testing okay is this valid is it repeatable uh, is it can you correlate it to anybody else's so I've so yeah that's a little piece that I that I found so if you want to so if you so find out when when you were born what the phase of the moon was and that is when you're going to have the most vitality. You can even prevent. You can even um, you can even predict some sporting events based on this. You know, if somebody wow. if somebody is on their lunation and somebody else isn't, one person's going to have an advantage to the other. So, little tricks, right? We got to write this manual. <laughs> it's like I'm getting goosebumps all over here, man. Wow. We can bring up any topic you want, Fernando. Victor will have a podcast. <laughs> Exactly. We just have we had, Victor, we had a big Victor. conversation about salt at that party, which was changed my whole, you know, concept of salt, salt I use, etc. So that's a whole nother rabbit hole too. So it's funny. At one point I was really stingy with my knowledge. And then at some point I said, <laughs> I won't what if I'm not here tomorrow? <laughs> <I'd rather just laughs> free it all up. Whatever I know, as long as you ask, I'll give you the answer. So I, so I, Victor, I, when you yeah. when you did the research and found those articles, I assume that was on deuterium depleted water. Was anybody doing anything in the space at all? Or did somebody yeah, just yeah, but very few. And they were making they were doing some incredible things, but they were just they were just not even known about, you know, Eastern Europe, 
Yeah, there were people, there were already people doing stuff at that time. There were people doing stuff since the late 90s. And really, this research comes to us. Uh, uh, Victor, from... let, let me pause you real quick here because, uh, Stephen, I think we need to preface what deuterium is and then what deuterium depleted water is. Well, let's so, let Victor, let's uh, let Victor, let, I'll, let's I'll, let I'll Victor do that. I'm going to make it, I'm going to uh, explain it to you very simply. This is a bottle that holds one liter of water. Okay. So, in one liter of water, there are 20,000 drops. So if anybody asks you how many drops of water are in one liter, it's 20,000. And when we think of water, we think of it as H2O. That's what we were taught. Two hydrogens, one oxygen. But out of those 20,000 drops in one liter, you have six drops that are not H2O. They are HDO or HOD. And that D stands for deuterium. And that is a heavier version of hydrogen. If you look at the periodic table, hydrogen is the first element. And in 1932, it was discovered that hydrogen had isotopes, two extra isotopes, deuterium and tritium. And what that means is that it has an extra neutron. So hydrogen is the simplest element in nature, and it's the only, first element. It's still 75% of the universe, and it's the only element that does not have a neutron. So it's just a proton and electron. And that's why it's the thing that everything uses for energy because it's so darn simple. Okay. Uh, stars use it for fuel. We use it for fuel. Rockets use it for fuel. Hydrogen. But then there's the heavier version of hydrogen which introduces the neutron. And that makes the hydrogen twice the mass. And that creates a biological problem. And when it combines with what with uh, oxygen, because oxygen is, I like to say, it's too dumb to be able to tell the difference to discriminate. So <laughs> when it combines with oxygen, you get either HOD or D2O. And that's incredibly rare. One out of every 41 million molecules are in this D2O state. However, roughly one out of every 6,420 molecules is in this HOD state. And this is a problem because it accumulates in our bodies. And it was discovered about 70 years ago that this is this is what this is if you reduce it then you could extend your health span and your lifespan and if you increase it it's the opposite you age faster you have less energy and it and the problem is purely mechanical because we have these little nanomotors that spin at the end of the in the, in the mitochondria at the end of, end of the electron transport chain if you want to get into a, a little basic biochemistry we have these incredible nano machines and they spin it up to, what is it, 9,000 RPM, uh, really fast, right? And they produce ATP. We produce, um, we produce like uh, one and a half times our body weight of ATP per day. So it's like constant. So they're creating ATP. And the way they create ATP is what causes them to spin is protons, that our food breaks down into eventually hydrogen, and that gets in, the, in that uh, complex. And uh, it's the fuel for these motors to spin to create ATP. And so uh, the mechanical problem is, is that when, it gets, when that motor gets a deuteron, which is a proton and a neutron pair, right, versus just the proton, it's like putting a square peg in a round hole. And roughly that happens every, every four and a half or five seconds. So when that motor, when these motors, which we have trillions of, constantly churning along to make to make energy and and water they also make by uh, metabolic water which is deuterium depleted so every five seconds it gets it stutters it gets impinged upon that it, it breaks down the motor so it causes wear and tear and also in that moment that wear and tear is produced no energy is made and this is constant from the time we're born to the time we die so turns out um and turns out that uh if you reduce the amount of deuterium in your body by 20%, I'm just cutting to the chase here, just again, you know, this is like the end of my one hour lecture, but <laughs> it turns out that uh, if you reduce deuterium, our physiology can do a lot better when there's less deuterium in it. And it turns out that 20% less is pretty much gets us back on track. So something in our evolutionary history, there was a time where we evolved, I believe that that uh, we had less deuterium on the planet. And that is a fact. We did have less deuterium in our water. So we just function better when we have less, we have less of this contaminant, which is causing resistance breakdown at the, 
at the uh, nanocellular level. So that's the that's that's pretty much what's going on. So every person has about two or more grams of this deuterium in our bodies. But when you look at it uh, compared to everything else that we need for life, glucose, the minerals, potassium, magnesium, there's like five times more. So it's just in everything. So we just, we have to reduce it. If we reduce it, then we have more energy. We conserve energy. And it's the only thing that actually, if you reduce deuterium, it's the only thing that will give you a true net energy benefit for, for cellular energy. So, and this translates to longer lifespan, perhaps, uh, certainly, certainly a longer health span. And um, it's, like I said, it's a purely mechanical problem that we have. And um, it's just heavier. Our bodies want the path of least resistance and this deuterium. Uh, we try our, we have in our physiology, there are mechanisms in place to try to filter it out, but we get overrun basically. So it was discovered in the late fifties, uh, in Siberia, these two young, two young, uh, doctors, scientists, uh, biophysicists and a gerontologist, they were trying to figure out why there were these populations there, two populations in the area of uh, two, cult two basic, basically native cultures, like Aboriginal cultures, kind of like Eskimos in a sense. Uh, they live in very harsh environments. But they, were, they were trying to figure out why they had so many more people over the age of 100, so many more centenarians than everywhere else in Europe or, f or in the world for that matter. Like, like normally you have between five and 50 centenarians uh, per million in a population and they had 324. Like what's going on? Is it wow? Why are they Why are they living so much longer? They're even Why are they so healthy? They live in a very hard and harsh environment. Why are they birthing kids into way way older than than women in, in other parts of the world? You know, having birthing children into their fifties and and beyond even. Uh, so they looked at everything. They looked at the food, everything, and then then they honed in on the water, and they saw that they were drinking water that had 16% less deuterium than everybody else was drinking. And they said, oh, this, this may be it. And then they started experimenting with it, with animals and plants, and saw what happens when you, what happens when you reduce, give water. And that, and that's, in that time, it's natural. There's certain places in the world that have less deuterium than other places, just naturally. And that has to do with the hydrological cycle and all this stuff. But in certain places, you have this 16% in their, in their, in their case, 16% lower than everybody wow. else. And, uh, that was a, that was a huge discovery. And they published on this in 61 and then Americans published on this in 66. And even way before that, in the fifties, the Americans scientists had already concluded that heavy water, the kind that you make in a laboratory, because if it wasn't for the discovery of heavy water and this isotope of hydrogen in 1932, we wouldn't have had the atomic age. We wouldn't have had nuclear bombs. We wouldn't have had atomic energy. So this was a huge discovery. So they synthesized this heavy water in a laboratory. And then they said, well, is this, is this still water? Because it looks like water. It tastes like water. It's a little heavier. And it turns out if you give it to a mammal for five days, they're going to die. Okay. Everything will just shut down and die. It's not metabolically compatible. It's like it's like trying to uh, fit something that's too big through a small hole. It just won't make it, uh, no matter how hard you squeeze, you know. So, so that's the problem. And, uh, and this was a huge, huge revelation. But nobody did anything about it for a long time because, there was, because the process to, to, reduce, to remove the deuterium or reduce the deuterium in water uh, was just, it just hadn't been invented, you know. So the people that lived in these areas where you had deuterium depleted water naturally, they enjoyed the benefit of it and everybody else didn't. So, um, but now uh, we can, we know how to reduce it and it's still difficult. It is very difficult. It's like four companies in the world that are doing it. Our water is expensive because it's a, it's a process that takes an enormous amount of energy. So it's really nascent. It's very, we're very, we're, we're at the beginning of something, you know, this is, this is something that is a, a new standard in water purity and the ability to create this for people. It's only going to get better. I, I like to, I like to think of it. Like if you, if we're sitting around a campfire in the 1860s, uh, dreaming about a light bulb, 
right? It hasn't come yet, but we know it's coming. So same thing with this. Eventually, somebody will figure out a way to do this at home cheaply, uh, but it's, it's, it's uh, right now that person, we don't know. If, I mean, if that person exists, then they, they, haven't made, they haven't done it yet. So the process we use is it's, it's very complicated. Uh, it took decades to create. And, uh, but at the same time, we just we copy nature. So we, just, we look at the hydrological cycle. We see how it works. We see how the hydrological cycle discriminates for this heavier isotope. And we just apply that in a closed loop system in, in a factory or a laboratory and that we reduce, we can reduce almost a hundred percent of deuterium, but our water is uh, 94, 94 to 97% reduced. And that, that is way more than, than you, than, than you need. But, uh, uh, but well, remember, remember these people that, these people that are uh, uh, enjoying this, they're enjoying this for many lifetimes, many generations. And they're, and they're living in an area if they have, naturally uh, determined depleted water by 10 to 20 percent this is also the food they grow their food with it and everything so now now it's for us now it's time for us to play catch up because this is such a such a um it's such a huge biohack it's like it's it really it really is especially for people that as you get as you age you know if you're when you're younger you have less deuterium you have less of this burden but if you think about it we run on mitochondria predominantly. There's there's some there's a, a some debate and controversy about that, but that's the that's the that's the established science right now. There's there's some more esoteric stuff I can get into, but we have our metabolism and uh, our ability to breathe and exist uh, is because we produce ATP from mitochondria, and as we age, we have less mitochondria. So when we're 12, a cell might have 50,000 mitochondria, and when we're, and that and that same cell having, having copied itself over decades and decades and decades, and because of the wear and tear, that same cell may have, a thousand mitochondria or 300. So we just we lose our ability to produce energy. It's like ship. It's like closing factories and shipping them off somewhere else. They never they never reopen again. Right. So, so we have we have to protect our energy production pathways, because yeah. it's it's everything, everything on this planet's a game of energy. You know, we wouldn't yep. need to we wouldn't need to kill to eat if we didn't need energy. Right. So, and how and now we're discovering that there are other ways to give ourselves energy, not just not just through uh, consumption of calories, but there are other ways that our 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 bodies are dynamic, our physiology is dynamic. So, so. We have a little bit of understanding now, and and here's a good clue: when you look at the water that our bodies make, because the water inside the mitochondria is not water that we drink; we synthesize it. It's it's made fresh. Uh, so, and this water is sixty to seventy percent deuterium depleted. So you go, okay, if the water my body's making is deuterium depleted, wouldn't it be good to drink deuterium depleted water because that's closer to the metabolic water and it's less, <laughs> it's it's the path of least resistance. So, yeah, that's that's a uh, it's exciting because I, I uh, I believed in the science of this before we started the company. We were not drinking deuterium depleted water, but we still started the company because we believed in the science. And the science, the science, um, it really held up. It proved us right. You know, it's one. Well, of I, hope, I hope we don't have any cannibals that are listeners because they'll be very excited that if they eat people, they'll have deuterium depleted water. <laughs> I better. I better. I better. <laughs> <laughs> get a bodyguard exactly so Victor, Victor, if you could show the what you know containers you're what the, you have a couple of least comes in and then the recommended way for people to consume it you know you're not you people aren't because it's expensive they're not going to buy a bottle and then just drink the whole thing straight right yeah why yeah it's it the goal of the water the water only has one function to deplete deuterium from your body to reduce the burden of this heavier isotope of hydrogen from our body and when that happens the self-healing organism kicks in so we make uh we make our water available in glass and we make it available in plastic like i said we have glass we have plastic it's the same exact water uh and the the the, the plastic's the most affordable uh it's nothing leaches out of the plastic we blow it ourselves we ship everything uh 
refrigerator or temperature controlled 65 degrees over the ocean we if the plastic gets a scratch on it we throw it out i mean i'm because because you know it's, it's pet1 doesn't leach bpa but but there's a lot of people you just can't convince that they have to have the glass so we make the glass available too and it's nice you know it feels nice in your hand it's a a texture it feels good to drink out of glass but but if your goal is to term depletion and you want to do it economically uh the two liter two liter bottle of uh two liter bottle of uh, light water 10 ppm we also make a 5 ppm uh, we don't make a lot of it but uh it's just a little bit lower just a little bit extra but in the long in the long when you're looking at this as a long-term strategy you just have to reduce the deuterium by 20 percent and you just have to maintain that. Anything beyond 20% is gravy. It's like if you're if you're ill, then that it's good. Maybe you could go a little lower. If you're an athlete, it'll give you an unfair advantage. But uh, if you just want to maintain health, optimal health, I'd say perfect health, as perfect as you can, uh, assuming you're doing everything else right, then you will lower your deuterium level from 150, which is where most people are. 150 parts per million. The ocean is 155 ppm. Uh, most coastal cities, most most places where big population centers where the bulk of humanity lives is uh, 150. And then there's some places in the mountains here and there and isolated areas that have much lower. Antarctica has the lowest on the planet. It's 89 parts per million. And that's wow. because that's that's because that's water that's locked in time from millions of years ago when there was less deuterium on this planet. And right. uh, deuterium, it uh, accumulates on this planet from meteor bombardment. Uh, when, the I, when, the, when the last ice age uh, ended, the, the ice, uh, the glaciers melted, and that introduced an enormous amount of methane into the atmosphere, which also increased the deuterium. So our planet goes through these cycles of less deuterium and more deuterium and um, just reduce it by 20 percent and and you'll see that that uh, your body will kick in its self-healing ability and uh, you'll you'll never look back so so to do that victor if you were to buy a bottle what's the recommended ratio of that water like you get a, a glass of other water whatever right. filtered structured how much of the deuterium depleted water do you add to that to make to there's get that two, there's support? two strategies Okay. One is to take the light water, ten part, is that ten part per million, ten ppm, ten part per million, and combine that with another water, because uh, it is expensive, right? So some people do drink it straight, but it's not even necessary. So you combine that with whatever water you you like or have, uh, spring water, reverse osmosis, distilled, and then you get a certain deuterium amount. So if you combine it one to one, you get 80 ppm. And at one to four, 122. So somewhere between one to one and one to four. And that if you're if you're if you're at 150 and you start drinking the term depleted water that's 122 through the mechanism known as hydrogen exchange, every day you will reduce a little bit of the deuterium as you replace the liquids that you lose. And as you keep going, you can drop that. Now, the other strategy is to not mix it and just drink a half liter to a liter a day and do whatever else you're doing. And it's not going to be a linear depletion curve. It'll be kind of like this, but that's fine too because you'll still get to where to the end goal, which is deuterium depletion. So yeah, a couple of little strategies. So, so if, you're drinking, uh, if you're drinking half a liter of light water, 10 ppm per day, but you consume a total of a liter and a half of water per day that means that that's a that's a one to two ratio right three parts total and if you're in so yeah there's a and then on our website drinklightwater.com we have a calculator at the very bottom oh, of the page okay. cool. and you can you can right uh, put in what your what your water you're combining how much you drink per day all this now i will say this most people that what i've noticed Almost across the board, people drinking like a gallon of water a day are chronically dehydrated because they're getting their, they're getting the wrong water. Hmm. And what is what is what is hydration? It's it, it's tied to it's tied to mineralization too. It's tied to electrolytes. So 
when you start drinking deuterium depleted water, you'll find that you you need less water to feel hydrated. Gotcha. Because wow. your body long, is the water that it needs. How long does it keep? Like if you were to get deuterium depleted water in those containers, how long? I mean, you're, I know you're not going to sit on it anyway. Because a you million years, water. two million, it's not going to wow, change. I mean, but you can literally keep it in a bottle, let it sit there, and it's. Yeah, if you um, if you if you take um, if you expose it to air for too long, um, you might it might go up by like uh, you know a quarter of a ppm or something. Wow! No, it's very stable. There's nothing. There's nothing. Once once the HDO molecule is removed from the water, it doesn't come back in. Unless there's something from the atmosphere, you know, you, you're only with only by mixing it with some other water. That's yeah. all. Fernando, so any questions? It's purified. Gonna, it's purified for good. Bunch more. Yes, yes. Um, question is, uh, it's coming. It's uh, AI and um, and how AI could bring the you know the four companies help the four companies that are working on this uh, to you know speed up the. I guess the progress so that more AI is not that smart yet. <laughs> okay. All right. <laughs> it's, it's learning not. though. It's learning though. It's not. I, I test it all the time. It has, it has, there's, it has limited. It's, it's about AI is not as smart as a smart person. It's smarter than a, it's smarter than somebody that's got a 80 to 90 IQ, but it's not, it's just, it's just refer AI just references what out there. It doesn't, it doesn't have an ability for abstract thought. And it and and let's be honest. When you look at the top uh, inventions in history, it's never like where the person goes, "I got it." It's always like, "Huh, that's weird. I didn't expect that." It's always like an act. It's always like a happy accident. So uh, yeah, it's a, it's yeah. A AI AI is uh, it's good. It's a helper. It's like a secretary, but it's not. It's not a scientist. So um, the thing is, is that when you look at H2O and HDO, they're so similar. They're so close to one another. So when you, so everything, when we, when we think of water filtration, you mentioned reverse osmosis, we're talking about removing contaminants from water, right? But when you're reducing deuterium from water, you're taking water from water. <laughs> mm. And that's a lot harder. There's no, there's no membrane. There's no filter that does it. You have to just, uh, you have to, you have to mimic. You have to uh, replicate the hydrological cycle and how it does it. So, and now the body does it in a, in a very interesting way. You know, by uh, through hydrogen exchange. So our physiology has a way, and we're studying that maybe because biomimicry is a great way to learn about uh, is, to, is a great way to uh, invent things that don't exist, especially metamaterials. So um, yeah, we're living in just really interesting times uh, all across the board, good and bad. And uh, eventually somebody will figure out how to say like, you know, you six drops go that way. <laughs> but, uh, but right now it's very, it's very, uh, very complicated. We don't make much of it. So even if, even if the whole world, tomorrow woke up and said, I get it. I'm on it. I want it. It wouldn't, we wouldn't be able to do it. Cause it, yeah. cause it, it's a, we don't, we don't create a lot of it, you know? Yeah. And, uh, but it is a new standard of purity. Eventually it, people will catch up people. Like I said, people dreamt about the light bulb forever. And then all of a sudden it came. So all it takes is one person to figure out a new way. And uh, that's why I'm t saying this is because I want to encourage somebody out there uh, to see if they can, and it's a challenge many people have taken up, see if they can uh, uh, invent a new way or, or a, a cheaper way, or yeah. this, this, this ties, this is part of our, this is part of our uh, evolution. And maybe, maybe the answer is not invent a new process. Maybe the answer is keep the process that we have and figure out how to make free energy. <laughs> yeah. And yeah. then then our process is fine because we don't have to use the uh, energy that we have today, which is an explosive force, right? Whether it's electricity well, or whether it's natural gas, maybe maybe we need to focus on the the implosive 
way to create energy. We live, we're swimming in a, we're swimming in a sea of energy in the ether that is invisible. So if we can harness that, it says, this is, we're, we're, uh, the Holy Grail, uh, of human evolution is the room temperature superconductor because that makes everything equal. It, it, it makes unlimited free energy for everybody. And it allows us to have magic carpets and anti-gravity. <laughs> and once we discover that, and eventually we will, we will, we will truly evolve as a species. We won't be cavemen anymore. We will become a level one civilization and truly be able to explore outside of our planet. Right now, we're having some difficulties and challenges on some other fronts, but uh, but yeah. it's, it's a, it's a, it, these things these things happen. These things happen. Uh, I mean, I you know I have I'm a I'm a man of faith. I think I think uh, eventually. The uh, whoever's watching us from above says, OK, I let them have it. <laughs> <laughs> well, I love what you said about the fact that our bodies do it naturally. I mean, it's incredible, our biology that, that does it. And then I also think to the fact that people have asked, even on Joe Rogan, there was that one famous guy that's like, well, Joe Rogan asked, why don't, why don't we desalinate the oceans? And he's like, well, we can. But right now it's cheaper to ship the bottle from Fiji than it is to produce the desalinated Water from the ocean, but it'll it's going to. It happen. shouldn't be because because right. there are there are technologies that are being blocked from uh, mainstream consumption simply because uh, there's a it, we live in a plutocracy, which means the people at the top keep the ones at the bottom from coming up by limiting by by limiting uh, invention by limiting innovation. So it's a it's a it's a huge threat if you come up with something that puts somebody out of business. Right. So if I come up with a way to make energy that puts the oil companies out of business, they're upset. Naturally so, right? Yeah. You know, like anybody that we're trying to we're trying to protect what we created. Uh, but it's un, but it's unfair because it's not because it's a, there's a, it's a selfish nature. So if there's there's inventors that have come and gone, you know, Nikola Tesla is one of them. How many of this how most of the things that he gave us is is is, is what is responsible for what we have today. Yeah. And yet there was so much more that got that got uh, put away because it, it was inconvenient to the model of uh, of making money. You know, yeah. if somebody right. tomorrow and said, hey, I got a way to I got a way that you can get free unlimited energy uh, without paying the without paying your electric bill, it would be very disruptive. So I like this disruptive type of stuff. And um, as sure as every, everybody. Every, I think I think you'd be you'd be insane not to be open to uh, improving our lives in that way. Here's a, here's the problem. I was thinking about this the other day. We are energy hungry animals. If you take the entire population of the planet and you divide that by the amount of energy that we consume, we've gotten very comfortable with our refrigerators and our cars and our planes and everything is electrified. We consume 60,000 times more energy than we produce. Used to be oh. that we didn't do that. We, what we, what we could, we produce about, we produce about 50 to hundred Watts, right? You know, maybe you pedal a bicycle, you can measure it, right? You could, you could, you could power a little generator and you could see how much, how much power you can make from, from your body. And by the way, you have to put calories in your body to create the energy. It doesn't come free. But think about that. Uh, sorry, 600 times. So 60,000 watts is what we use continuously. And we're all implicated. We're all guilty. This is, if you take every human on the planet and, and make them equal in their energy consumption, we need 60,000 watts and we make 100. Wow. That's a problem. The only way out is to figure out a way to make energy without destroying, uh, without destroying our environment, or or um, or or charging for it, because that just creates a system where where some where where somebody is uh, living like a god and somebody else is living like a slave, you know. Yeah. And, and and if it was truly free market capitalism, somebody would say, hey, like like Stanley Meyer, he got killed for it. He came up with a he came up with a uh, a better electrolyzer, he figured out how to crack water and run your car on hydrogen. Well, they didn't like that, that, that because that was, gonna, that was going to evolve humanity. 
So, so if we really had a free market, then we would already have these things because somebody would say, I don't like, I don't want to pay 23 cents a kilowatt. I'll create something and charge five cents a kilowatt. And someone, and, but someone says, Nope, not going to let you not going to let you. So right. this is where we're at. We're, we're, uh, so, we're still fighting for resources. So Victor, with where we are now and where you are and where we are with the production capabilities to, to deplete deuterium, what are the, I mean, I know it's all on the website and everything, but can you just share with our audience, what is the cost now for those bottles and, and even quantify that to a monthly supply, let's say, and then say what you, yeah. and what do you, and what do you project in the, like say in the next five years where, where you think it'll be, or you can kind of draw a, an estimate maybe. Sure. Right now, DDW costs between 16 to 20 bucks a liter. And uh, that means that somebody, people spend typically, they buy typically two cases to three cases per month, which is uh, 16 or 24 liters. And that's, it's going to cost you somewhere between 300 and 400 bucks a month. So it's like a car payment without the car, but that's what it is. And uh, once it starts working for you, it doesn't feel so bad because it, it really does work. But yeah, nobody's used to paying that kind of money for water or anything really but it works and um and you could stretch it too but but that is that is that's the reality okay that is the reality some people can stretch a case to go a month and then you know it's 160 bucks but that is the that's the reality and uh five years from now well we're going to build a facility here in the u.s we'll see again it all depends on the cost of energy we've actually our prices have gone up because energy cost has gone up in the last Oh yeah, years and we haven't increased our prices because we are a vertical company. So um, uh, energy cost is double, but we haven't increased anything. So it's just wow. a matter of cost. It's it's all related to the cost of energy. I mean, the, 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 it takes millions of dollars to put the infrastructure in to, right. to have all the columns that we have and all that. But once that's said and done, what is your what is your recurring cost? It's the cost of the energy to do it. And with that said, Fernando, I know you've got questions, but this is on top of that one. What is your production capability today? Like how many people could you serve on a monthly basis with this product? We couldn't, we couldn't serve more than 5,000 people. Wow. Amazing. Yeah. <laughs> right. That's why I think between all the companies in the world that are doing this, you know, you could, collectively, I don't know if we could serve more than a city, city, uh, city block in Manhattan, you know? <laughs> wow. So, uh, but at the same time, uh, you have to realize that uh, there, are, there are other ways you can, let's say you can't afford the water. So there are things you can do to, uh, you're not really gonna get down 20%, but there are things you can do. You can practice a ketogenic lifestyle. Uh, you could not, you could, you could limit your intake of, of, uh, of, foods that are that have uh you know artificially like hydrogenated fats and uh, although that there's not much of that left but uh nature strategy is to load the carbs with deuterium and deplete the fats so you can increase your fat content you can decrease your carbohydrate content it's a fat's a better source of fuel anyway you can eat less you can fast let's say when you fast and you burn um and you uh, burn a, uh, a kilo of fat, you will produce about a liter of deuterium depleted water. So there's a wow. strategy. So there's, there's things you can do that will uh, get your body into a little bit better shape. How, how long of a fast would do that, Victor? Uh, intermittent is good. You know, I, I've been a, I've, I've been crazy in my, you know, I've, I did, I like dry fasting, although I've done it less since I started DDW, but, uh, any amount of fasting is good. Anything. Wow, that's, well, that's the a great trick. You can do the better dry fasting is better than water fasting. If you can pull it off, uh, it's just, it's just the body makes its own water. So when you burn, when you burn fat, you produce metabolic water, which is deuterium depleted. So these you, are, you can you can increase your sun exposure. Red light really helps the mitochondria. Uh, so there are other there are things you can do, and you can be aware. You can you know you can 
you know, it's interesting when you look at uh, when you start analyzing this stuff, you see that that uh, nature discriminates for uh, lower deuterium as well. Why do mer why do one theory? Why do birds migrate? You're, you're hanging out in a nice tropical environment and all of a sudden you fly two to four thousand miles somewhere in northern Canada to give birth to your young to lay your eggs. Right. Why? It's a deuterium depletion strategy. Wow. It ensures more energy for reproduction and for the and for and for the for the uh, early growth of that of that newborn. Just a little just a delta of maybe five percent makes a huge difference. So Incredible. everything in nature discriminates for this. Uh, humpback whales, okay? Where do they live? They live in Alaska. What do they drink? They drink the glacial runoff. What is it? It's deuterium depleted. Uh, the long, the biggest whales in the world hang out in Antarctica. Where's the water there? It's deuterium depleted. Then what do they do? The humpback whales, they swim to Hawaii. And what do they do in Hawaii? They fast. They fast for three to six months. So wow. everything in nature has a deuterium depletion strategy. We just haven't, once you, once you start looking at it from that lens, through those optics, you go, oh, wow, this is really, this is really profound. So, uh, yeah, you just stop. You just stop consuming those foods that are going to increase your deuterium level. We, you know, we do much better on fat. There's a reason for that. Uh, we do humans naturally fasted. There's a reason for that. This is all has to do with our metabolic output. And uh, so my point is, Stephen, is that is that you can still practice deuterium depletion even without deuterium depleted water. And that was and very insightful. And and my t-shirt, you see this t-shirt, keep your motors running. Those are the, yeah. these are the ATP synthase nanomotors. So. <laughs> that's a, that's a, that's a pretty nerdy shirt, Victor. <laughs> All right, Victor, I got a question for you. Um, let's bring back a little bit of esoteric uh, lunation. Um, perhaps also talk about nucle nuclear. Um, have you, looked into nuclear like i read an article this week biological transmutation is that what you're talking about no i'm talking about how well the nuclear part is on the free energy category oh. or the cheaper energy well, yeah there's there's all kinds of people making progress right now very exciting um there's there's p people making progress in fusion yeah fusion uh there's <laughs> people making progress in uh, uh low energy nuclear reaction uh there's people making there's there's it's it's coming. You're not going to stop this wave. It's coming, and uh, because we need it, we can't evolve. We how do you how do you sustain yourself if you need 600 times more energy than you produce? You have to make the energy free, or you have to make it easier to make. You know, and uh, there's no that it's 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 the it's the thing that's going to once we have it and once it's accepted and once you can't it's you know at some point you're not going to be able to hold back the floodgates. The dam will break. And then everybody will be in a new world because they're not going to they're not going to be preoccupied. You know, our the energy wars, right? Everything is a everything is a struggle for energy. You know, the, everything in nature is trying to kill everything else to eat it to to get energy. We're in, we're and and uh, we're not going to really make advances in our evolution until we figure this out. You know, in the in the in the uh, was I think. In the Bible, somewhere in the Revelations, it says, uh, "It says in the new world, the the lions shall lay with the lamb." What that means is a new source of energy, because the lamb, the lion, will not long, no, will no longer need to eat the lamb for energy. There will be a new way of energy production. And in fact, in fact, there are there are uh, there's a lot out there on biological transmutation the, that we can produce energy. Um, in our bodies without caloric intake. And in fact, I have met two people that were, they call them breatharians, but the real term is autotroph. So I've met a couple of these autotrophs and it's real. Now, can you explain it? I think I can explain the physiology behind it because I was super fascinated with this ability to, to exist without, without water and without food and to make it yourself and uh, get energy in a different way. And I think that I think that in a, um, 
I think these things, you can turn these things on when you're stressed, like a, like a, like a mother can lift a car, uh, when her, you know, her child is pinned under a car and, and she's able to lift the car off the child when normally she wouldn't do that. We have these superhuman abilities. They're just not turned on. And, yeah. and, uh, and that's, that's, what's so exciting is to understand what they are, how they work and how to turn it on, how to turn our superhuman talents are because they're innate they're there i mean we it's it's in our collective history we have stories of immortals we have stories of people levitating we have stories of people flying this is not we, we could say this is an imagine you, you somebody imagined it but but if somebody imagined it they got the idea from somewhere so it, it means that at some point there was there's some validity to this you know there's 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 a there's so much m more to this, to the biology of humans than we than we realize. And and when we're when we're stressed, we do things that we don't believe are possible. And then we and then we go, how do I do that? And you don't know because it just came out of necessity. So, uh, and 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 while we're here, you know, we have a short life. We're just here for a moment. Why not try to understand some of this? Why why? Uh, what else is what else is what else is more exciting? <laughs> yeah, fascinating conversation. So, what in addition to running your company? So, part of your day to day is it seeking new ways to do things, or um, uh, like I'm, what? Like what do you like? What what on a I mean, you have incredible passion for all this? Obviously, what's your day to day? Is it is it full tilt running the company, or are you out there? You know, examining and looking for it's new both. things. It's both. Sometimes I got to fill in for customer service, which I love doing, talking to people. And other days I'm, I'm, I'm working on developing the factory here and uh, the technical challenge and the problem. And I love that because it's, a, for me, it, for me, this job and this company encompasses all my passions. I have a, I had a, I had a, a seven year career in Hollywood on a technical side behind the camera. I'm very, I'm very excited about technical things, making things, inventing things, and also and also health, uh, and finding easier and easier ways to to um, remediate ourselves from any disease or illness, and then optimizing our physiology, how to how to how to how to perform better, right? So so yeah, I'm I'm like uh, I'm busy. <laughs> well, what's part of your like part of your daily routine for health? What are some other than the deuterium depleted water, what are some things you do daily? You're like I, I'm going to do this because it's a priority for me for my health. Like whether it's a biohack or a natural thing or breath work or whatever. What do you What do you do daily? Uh, it varies. Uh, you know the the, the routine. Uh, everything in moderation, including moderation and uh, routine is good. But I I break it up. Um, but but I'll tell you what is important is uh, yoga, right? It's important to move your body. It's important to be in alignment. Uh, I think something that some that people should do every day, especially as you get older, is hang upside down. That is just you cannot. There's nothing you can do that will um, that will equal the benefit of uh, inversion. So inversion is really important. Um, getting getting sun exposure. I you know I got to get. I'm 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 white now. I gotta get Florida, <laughs> I spent, baby. The, winter, like, I spent the winter watching snow fall out my window, you know. So, it's funny, Victor. I've got those um inversion boots that I've had for like 20 years, and most gyms don't have a bar where they're thin enough for that thing to fit over. I know, I know. Uh, so I got my literally bought I bought a I bought a pull-up stanchion to put on my deck just so I could invert because I couldn't. I find healed it, I all no, of my back problems. No yeah. I healed every single spinal problem I have just about, um, through inversion. Wow. And just, you, you invert and you, and this is a, this is, this is a ancient yoga did teach this as well. And, uh, they didn't have those cool inversion boots. It wasn't as easy for them <laughs> hang, hanging, hanging like bats from trees. But yeah, yeah the, the thing is to create space, you know, to create, it's the, what we, what, what we have to tune into is this, is the moment between the breaths. It's that, it's that fine moment that is between the inhale and the exhale. So breath work is really important. Uh, I like to, I like to, um, um, yeah, I have different, different breath work exercises that I do. 
and I'm actually working on an app right now for um, to create. It's a there's some there's a breath work that'll create coherence, better coherence for uh, uh, between the heart between the heart and the brain. So uh, you want to the goal is to reduce your heart rate and increase your heart rate variability. But then there's also um, other things when you get more detailed things to get into on that. So scientists, uh, Russian scientists discovered that the that if you want to have brain heart coherence, that you want uh, five and a half seconds, five and a half seconds inhale, five and a half seconds exhale, and then or you can or if you want to get into a meditational state, you double that eleven and eleven. So um, that's that's just the science. So like I said, I like to find I like to search if somebody had if somebody somebody has a theory about something or I like to find the data, you know, I like, I like things that are quantified. Qualitative is great, but, but, uh, something, you know, a uh, uh, Hitchens razor, if you, anything that presented without evidence can be refuted without evidence. So, but if you have the data, if you have the quantif, if you have, if it's quantifiable, qualitative is good because that works for you. Like, you know, it works for you. So you, and you, then, then that's a qualitative statement to somebody. I did this and it works for me. And you know, it works for you, but to somebody else, it's not a quantif it's not quantified. But if you could quantify the data and really, and understand the underlying mechanisms, the scientific mechanism using the scientific method, and then, and then go, yeah, Hey, this checks out. And then it'll, and then, and then it's repeatable. And that's, I'm very interested in that. So I like to find, I like to look for, uh, I like, to, I like backup, you know, <laughs> I like to, you know, you, you don't want to go into anything without backup. You know, if somebody, if, if you say something, you don't, if you didn't, you, you want to have some evidence that in support of what you're saying. Otherwise, it's just, otherwise, it's just an opinion. So. Yeah, Fernando, you had an inversion table at your place in San Francisco. I remember mm -hmm. that up on the outside, though, <laughs> on that flat. I've had, I've gone to three inversion tables. It's, it's like you said, Victor, it, it does amazing things for the body. Highly recommend everyone. They don't have the boots. The inversion table is easier to use than the boots. It's uh, one, uh, one equipment piece of equipment that takes about, you know, a couple of maybe three feet by three feet in a, in a space uh, and just hang. Don't start hanging upside down, hang, you know, closer to upside down. But then I got to a point where I was working upside down on my phone for 10 yeah, minutes. That's what I do. Yeah. You yeah. You create space, create space in the body because, you know, gravity has got us down and uh, yeah. you have to flip it. So yeah. I like, I do that. I do red light. I, I have a, uh, I inhale high molecular hydrogen gas, you know, all the cool stuff that I think, but the main thing is food is medicine. You know, I really understand food is medicine. I, I, I get that. I get the art the culinary art of that. And I've gotten pretty adept at that. And uh, so that, I think that's 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 a key that most people are missing. You know, yeah. Stephen, we've done a lot of these conferences and then, you know, all these great ideas, but then we look at how people eat and we go, well, you know, it doesn't it doesn't add up. So I think that's a bit of that's a bit of something that people need to uh, get a little bit more involved in is understanding how to feed themselves where the food is your medicine. Right. right. Yes, and I believe we can help them with mindset of worthiness and self-love and self-care because if they have the mindset of self-love worthiness self-care then they will start thinking differently feeling differently feeling like, you know i am absolutely you have to care about yourself <laughs> so if yeah. we to a on that note let's start to one now because we're about done but offer let victor know what you offer what you can offer to his audience as well with that theme of the course that you have as well that'd be great and then we kind of kind of close it out from there yeah we'll close it out and then um and then we'll get the the lunation calculator or calendar somehow if, if we can provide you just look it up yourself you find oh. out it's very easy you can you can uh just get your birth date and then and then uh go to chat gbt and ask it what was the phase of the moon what was ask it twice because it lies sometimes and then it says <laughs> oh i'm sorry you're right you're you're absolutely right i'm sorry
I found that I found that a few times. Like, uh, did you do this? I'm like, oh, so sorry. No, I didn't do that part. <laughs> just say, just say the the word you're looking for is ephemeris. Just say, say what is the, what was the phase of the, you know, bring up the ephemeris for this day, uh, the day you were born, and you'll know, you'll know what, you'll know what uh, moon sign you were born under, and uh, or what phase. You'll know the sign too. That's good to know. But the phase is what I'm talking about. And then you can, and then you can, uh, that could be, that's your, that's your internal clock. That's the, if you were born on a full moon, you're always going to feel great on a full moon. Wow. Right. Man, I'm getting goosebumps here. So, right. to, so to answer Stephen's uh, question, um, so what I do, uh, Victor, I have three group uh, coaching calls that, um, help people focus on uh, three areas of life, health, wealth, and relationships by expanding their love, their freedom, and their growth. And they are meant to be a support system where people come, they get a few ideas that I, you know, uh, ex help them connect with that has to do with a lot of intuition. So it's how to feel into the body and start following the advice that's already in within them and they've probably been avoiding for years so that's what i do I, Man, you I, just said a mouthful right uh most of our lives is just learning how to listen to ourselves <laughs> our intuition yep yeah yeah that's victor uh, that, that's, yeah. That's, that's that's it's it's a it's the ultimate trust you know when you trust in your intuition it's the ultimate trust and um and that and and it and the reward is so beautiful because it show because if because it it uh, shows you that you are in alignment you're exactly where you're supposed to be, you know. So there's no there's nothing to worry about. Like I, definition of forgiveness, a friend once told told me was to uh, letting go of hope for a better past. So we're either literally living in the past or we're we're concerned about the future, and then the present moment. I mean, what gets us in the present moment, right? It's only it's 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 like this type of situation where we're where we're where we're vibing with one another, you know, uh, or we're or or laughter, uh, joy, but also pain, pain and suffering gets you in the present moment, and sometimes that's what we that's that's what that's the blessing that we get to put us in the present moment. It's not my ideal lesson, but. That's what happens. That, that those things will put us in the and meditation will put us in the present moment, but uh, ecstasy will put you know all the there's things that will put us in the present moment and then and then um, like you said you know we only ha we have a choice right we have a choice either your self love or not, and uh, and you can't have your foot in both you can't have your foot in in love and you and the one foot in love and the other in fear. You have to you you have to commit and and. It's it's difficult because because from the time we're born we we have to learn how to cope with disappointment and we have to learn how to cope with failure because you know we fall and we get back up so we so we devise mechanisms we invent strategies and ways to cope with failure and those we get we get very advanced very adept at that but we don't get adept at how to cope with success and love. Hmm. We have to Man, what a great uh what a great way to end the podcast. <laughs> That's awesome. <laughs> very Zach, very Zach Bush ish. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. That was great. If you spend Thank enough you, time Victor. alone, if you spend enough time alone like I do, you, <laughs> these things will come in. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Thank you, Victor. Uh, taking tons of notes here. You'll see on the Google Doc. Uh, thank you. I'm just, you know, so many times you're sharing things and I was getting goosebumps. And I think, you know, people are just so connected. And it, it, thank you so much for sharing and, and for being who you are. Um, I'm very, very grateful you guys invited me on this podcast. Um, yeah. It's in, I've been waiting know, for it. I know we booked it like a yeah. while back and so yeah it's cool. been great. awesome awesome thanks steven thanks victor everyone thank watching you. listening might want to hit replay <laughs> <laughs>
cuatro yeah, this a, yeah, this was a course. <laughs> this is good. <laughs> it's just, it's just, we're just scratching the surface, guys. It's all right. We'll have you back for sure, man. Well, uh, yeah, good stuff. All right. Cool. Well, thanks, thanks. Fernando. Thanks. Next time. Take care, guys.